Yo guys, what is going on? JPS back for another video, and today we're going to be reacting to the top 25 places to visit in Germany. So hit the like button, hit subscribe, and let's see some places that we need to add to our travel itinerary. Let's get it. What's up guys? My name is Ryan Shirley, and I want to show you some of my favorite places in the magical country of Germany. So here is my Germany top 25. Germany is one of the most beautiful and historical countries in the world. It's a land full of fairy tale towns, endless castles, and enchanting sceneries. Germany has so much waiting to be explored. Let's start this video off at Germany's highest mountain, the Zugspitze. Now with a height of 2,962 meters, it's easily one of the most impressive mountains in the country. Zugspitze is located in southern Germany and the easiest way to get to the top of the mountain is by a cable car. It costs around 60 euros and it's one of the biggest gondolas I've ever been in. Honestly an engineering phenomenon and a little scary going up. And once you reach the top, you can explore oh the God. mountain station, I mean it really blew me away up there. It totally reminds reminded me of an evil villain's lair. One thing that I thought was interesting is you can walk through this tunnel and it'll take you to the Austrian side of Zugspitze. Now from the platform on the German side, you can see the summit cross. Me and my brother decided we wanted to climb to the top. The snow made it a little sketchy, but we held on tight to the iron wire and climbed a ladder and made it to the cross. I mean, the views were unreal up there. I mean, if you go in the summertime, I'm sure it's not as sketchy to summit this. Now after Zugspitze, you can take the cable car down to visit the Lake Ibsi. Now it's known as the Maldives what? of the Alps with its clear water and tree dotted islands. I mean the color of the water there is astounding. Now if you have time, I definitely recommend walking along the lake. It's full of beautiful groves of trees and a perfect place to relax on the shoreline and enjoy some Bavarian nature. After we're going to head over to Wagenbruchi. Now I have to say this is one of the most scenic places in all of Germany. I mean I was just baffled by this place. It's this beautiful little lake nestled in the mountains and it's full of farm sheds that dot the hillside. Now the lake is overlooked by the perfectly placed Carvendel Alps. I mean it reminded me a lot of Alp de Susi in the Dolomites. I had such a fun time exploring here. I just walked down a little dirt road to get there and it was a spectacular place to enjoy the Bavarian sunset. While we're still in Bavaria, we're gonna head over to Berchtesgaden. Now I have to say this is one of the most beautiful towns in all of Germany. It's just a two hour drive from Munich and it's nestled in the Bavarian Alps. One of my favorite features of Berchtesgaden is the Watzmann Mountain. It's a uniquely shaped peak that towers over the town. It almost looks like someone took a bite out of it. One thing I love about Berchtesgaden is there's so many beautiful churches to explore. One of my favorites is the church in Ramsau. It's right next to this beautiful stream and there's this picture perfect ridge to observe the church from. Another one of my favorites is the Maria Jern Church which offers a perfect view of the Watzmann Mountain. One of the main reasons I wanted to go to Berchtesgaden was to visit Hitler's Eagle's Nest. Now I'm really fascinated with World War II history and I had to see this place for myself. Now, the Crazy. Eagle's Nest was built in 1939 and was given to Hitler for his 50th birthday. Now to get to the Eagle's Nest, you can take a bus up. When you get to the top, you'll walk through a deep tunnel into the mountain. When I was in there, it was just crazy to think that Hitler walked these same walls. Now at the end of the tunnel, there's a circular room that leads you into a golden elevator. Even though the Eagle's Nest and the road leading up to it cost nearly 200 million euros to make, adjusted for inflation, Hitler only visited it on 14 documented occasions. This may of be course. because Hitler was afraid of heights and he was also scared of using the elevator. Thankfully, the Eagle's Nest wasn't destroyed in World War II and today it's a restaurant with panoramic views. And while you're there, you can hike up some walking paths into the Berchtesgaden National Park Park, enjoying the incredible sights of this historical destination. Bro, imagine having a beer up there. That would be crazy. Afterwards, we're going to head back to Berchtesgaden to visit the Lake Kunensi. Now, the lake was created by glaciers, which makes it feel like you're in a fjord you'd see in Norway or New Zealand. When I was there, we took a boat ride to the end of the lake. It cost around 15 euros and took about 50 minutes to cross the lake. Now, the first stop was to the famous St. Bartholomew's Church. We kept going and we reached the end of the lake. We then hiked about 10 minutes to reach Obersee. I mean, just home to this iconic lake hut and the scenery there is just astounding. I mean, the lake's so clear and it's just surrounded by massive mountain walls that are hard to explain. I mean, I just had a great time enjoying the scenery around the lake. 
definitely gotta explore Kuningsi and Obersee while you're in Berchtesgaden. After, we're gonna visit the city of Dresden. Now located in Eastern Germany near the Czech Republic border, Dresden is an incredibly beautiful city built upon the Elbe River. It's famous for its Baroque and Rococo architecture. Now leading up to the 20th century, Dresden was just a remarkably beautiful place. But tragically, during World War II, the city was almost completely destroyed by air raids. I mean, the whole city was just turned into rubble. Now, the restoration of the city took decades to complete. Now, today, Dresden is one of Germany's most visited cities and has been nicknamed the Florence of the Elbe. Now, a beautiful nature spot near Dresden is the Bastai Bridge. It's located in Saxon, Switzerland, and it's this famous rock formation, part of the Elbe Sandstone Mountains. It's been a tourist attraction for over 200 years, in 1824, a wooden bridge was made into the rock formation, which was later replaced to the present bridge today. I mean, such a cool spot. Now, afterwards, we're gonna visit some of Germany's rivers. Now, Germany is home to some of Europe's most important rivers, and many scenic cities, towns, and castles have been built upon the river shores. Now, one of the most important is the Danube. It originates in the Black Forest and empties in the Black Sea on Romania's coast, making it the second largest river in all of Europe. Now, one of my favorite cities on the Danube is Passau. It's located right on the Austrian border, and Passau is nicknamed the City of Three Rivers as it's built upon the confluence of the Danube, Inn, and Ilz rivers. And it's just pretty cool how you can see the different colors of the rivers as they merge together. Now, during the Renaissance, Renaissance period, Passau was one of Germany's best sword and bladed weapon manufacturers. I mean, it must have been pretty cool to live in Passau back then. Now, the longest river in Germany is the Rhine. It begins in... Yo, some of these scenes are just like... Passau back then. That one's now, the beautiful. One... This one just looks insane to me. This must have been in autumn with all these colors popping out. I love how it wraps around. That's so beautiful. The longest river in Germany is the Rhine. It begins in Switzerland and empties in the North Sea as it crosses through important cities such as Cologne and Dusseldorf. Now the banks of the Rhine River are home to so many towns and castles. An interesting place is the Falls Grafenstein Castle, quite the name. Now it was built in the 14th century and served as a toll station for passing ships. A chain was put across the river, making sure ships would pay the toll and uncooperative sailors would be put in the castle's dungeon. I mean, it's pretty fascinating if you ask me. Now, yeah. another notable river in Germany is the Moselle. It's located in Western Germany, and the Moselle River is home to some of Germany's best wine country as the river's hillsides are covered with terrace vineyards where some of the best Riesling grapes grow. One of the most notable places on the river is the Kohem Castle. The original castle was built back in the 1100s and it made its money by collecting shipping tools on passing ships down on the river. Sadly, it was destroyed in 1689 by the French, but in 1868, a wealthy businessman from Berlin decided to rebuild the castle ruins. Today, it stands perched on a hill overlooking the beautiful town of Kohem and the Moselle River. Another fairy tale location in Germany is the Hohenzollern Castle. A lot now, of I have castles. To say, this is one of the most impressive castles in all of Germany. It sits perfectly on Mount Hohenzollern and can be seen from miles away. Hohenzollern is the last of three castles that was built upon this hill. It was completed in 1867 as a memorial to the Prussian royal family. Today, it's one of Germany's most visited castles, and I understand why. Now, after, we're going to visit oh. Lake Constance. Now, it's this <laughs> massive lake that's not only in Germany, but also borders Austria and Switzerland. Now, it's the second largest lake in all of Europe by volume. Now, one scenic place on the lake is this town <coughs> called Lindau. Now what makes it so unique is that it's this I can tell it's the second largest lake. When I first saw it, I thought it was the ocean. But then I was like, this is Germany. <laughs> One scenic place on the lake is this the town called here, Lindau. Man. Now what makes it so unique is that it's this island. Now it was first mentioned by a monk in the 9th century and during medieval times, it became quite the fortified city. Today, it's a popular place to visit. I just love the harbor and just the fact that it's an island. I mean, just such a cool place. Another picturesque city on Lake Constance is Mearsburg. It's located right on the shores and it's a historical town. I have beautiful colored houses. 
after we're going to visit the capital city of Berlin. Now today, Berlin is a thriving capital with a population of over 3.6 million people. It's an incredible city with a complicated history. Now Berlin was first documented in the 13th century. During World War II, it was the headquarters of Hitler's Third Reich and became the most heavily bombed city in history. After the war, Berlin was divided into the East and West Berlin. With the end of the Cold War, East and West Berlin were finally reunited in 1990. So one of my favorite spots is the Radenberg Gate. It's this 18th century neoclassical monument that is Germany's national symbol of unity and peace. You can also Beautiful. check out the Berlin Wall Memorial to see remnants of the historical wall. After Berlin, we're going to head over to Hamburg. Located in northern Germany on the Elbe River, Hamburg is the second largest city in Germany after Berlin. Thanks to its access to the North Sea, Hamburg grew as the port city throughout the ages that it is Europe's third largest port. I just love all the canals that run through the city. Hamburg is home to 2,500 bridges, making it the city with the highest number of bridges in Europe. It reminds me of modern day Venice. A really impressive spot in the city is the Spikerstadt. It's the largest warehouse district in the world. Now, another beautiful spot in the city is the Alster Lakes. It's a set of two artificial lakes that are often full of sailboats during the summertime. While we're still in northern Germany, we're going to visit Lübeck. Now located just an hour's drive from Hamburg, Lübeck is the second largest city on Germany's Baltic coast. Lübeck is famous for being the de facto capital of the Hanseatic League, which was a medieval organization that dominated maritime trade between the 13th and 15th centuries. Even after the Hanseatic League fell apart in 1669, Lübeck remained an important trading town on the Baltic Sea. Today, Lübeck is one of northern Germany's most beautiful cities and it's nicknamed the City of Seven Towers thanks to its prominent church towers that dot the city. My favorite feature of Lübeck is the Holstein Gate. It was built in 1464 and served as the city's gate. Today, it's a museum and stands as a symbol for the city. I mean, I just love its two Gothic towers and they kind of have a lean on them. I mean, such an incredible structure. Now from Lübeck, you can venture up to the Baltic coast. A beautiful area is Broughton. It's home to coastal cliffs and incredible views of the Baltic Sea. There's a walking trail that follows the coast and it's an ideal spot to explore on a summer day. You can also visit the shores of Schwarbutz. There's a massive beach and pier to walk out on. One of the most beautiful palaces in northern Germany is the Schwerin Castle. It's located about an hour from Hamburg and the castle is built upon an island in Lake Schwerin. There's been castles on the island since the 10th century, but the majority of the castle you see today was built in the 19th century. The castle is regarded as one of Europe's best examples of romantic architecture and is being nicknamed the Neuschwanstein of the North. Afterwards, we're going to visit Cologne. Now located on the Rhine River in western Germany, this 2000 year old city is full of history and beauty. It was established in the first century AD. What's really standing out to me is this cathedral-like structure. I'm not even sure what that is. Cologne. Thanks to its location as one of Europe's major trade routes, it grew to be one of the largest cities north of the Alps during medieval and renaissance times. Sadly, during World War II, Cologne was one of the most heavily bombed cities. Thankfully, the city has been rebuilt today. The most popular attraction of the city is the Cologne Cathedral. Cathedral its construction yeah. began in 1248 AD, and it wasn't completed for nearly 600 wow. years until 1880. I mean, the wait was worth it. I just can't believe the details of this Gothic cathedral. After Cologne, we're going to head over to Frankfurt. Frankfurt located yeah. in West Central Germany, Frankfurt is one of Europe's major financial hubs and it's home to the European Central Bank. It's full of beautiful skyscrapers and kind of reminds me of American cities. Aside yeah. from its skyscrapers and financial districts, Frankfurt is a beautiful historical town. One of the most popular places is Romerburg. It's a beautiful town square lined with colorful timber houses that will get your German vibes going. Afterwards, we're going to visit Heidelberg. Now, located about an hour's drive from Frankfurt, Heidelberg is a historic city situated on the Neckar River. Heidelberg is probably best known for its university that was founded over 600 years ago, making it Germany's oldest university. I mean, it would be... That's something that's really cool about Germany is just how old it is. There's so much history throughout Germany, which I can't really say the same uh, for a lot of towns throughout the United States. And I don't know. It's kind of it's one thing that I kind of wish we had was more history and more things to look back on and monuments and things because there really aren't that many. It makes sense. We're a newer country, but 
Also, some of these landscapes and, and views are just stunning. Like, I would kill to live here. Like, that's so beautiful. It was founded over 600 years ago, making it Germany's oldest university. I mean, it would be so cool to study there. Now, what I love about the city is its bridges that cross the Neckar River. I mean, Germany knows how to design a beautiful city. Now, while we're still in southwestern Germany, we're going to visit the Black Forest. Now, located right on the border of France, the region is famous for its dense forest, picturesque villages, and is often associated with the Brothers Grimm's fairy tales. Now, Hansel one of the most Gretel. prominent cities in the Black Forest is Freiburg. It's a vibrant university town with some incredible architecture. I mean, I'd love to just road trip through the Black Forest this summer. Now, afterwards, I we're wouldn't. going to visit the I'm magical scared. village of Rottenburg. Now, when you go to Rottenburg, you'll feel like you're walking in a fantasy movie. It's one of the most preserved medieval old towns in all of Europe. During the Middle Ages, Rottenburg thrived as it was located at the crossroads of European trade routes. At the beginning of the 15th century, it rose to becoming the second largest city in all of Germany. But during the 17th century, Rottenburg faced adversities such as the Thirty Year War and the Bubonic Plague. Without much resources, Rottenburg's growth was halted, which aided in keeping the town preserved in its medieval state. Today, Rottenburg maintains its medieval charm and it's been the inspiration for sets of Disney movies such as Pinocchio. If you go, you can check out the famous Ploning Corner or witness the beautiful Christmas markets. I mean, just hard to beat the allure of this German village. From Rottenburg, you can make the three hour drive to the beautiful city of Munich, also known as Bavaria's capital. Munich is located in the south of Germany, about 50 kilometers from the Alps. During World War II, Munich was heavily bombed by over 70 air raids but today the city is restored to its former beauty one of the most popular spots is the Marienplatz central square you'll find the new town hall with its stunning clock tower and historical figurines now for our final destination we're going to visit the iconic Neuschwanstein castle I have to say that it is the most beautiful castle in all Europe it's what inspired Disney's Sleeping Beauty Castle. I mean, uh. it's just the perfect place for a princess. Now, the castle is nestled at the very tip of southern Germany. Neuschwanstein Castle is placed perfectly in the mountains with a phenomenal 360 view of the Bavarian Alps in the town below. The construction of the castle began in 1869. During World War II, the SS debated blowing up the castle to prevent it from falling into the enemy's hands, but thankfully it never happened. Today, the castle receives over 1.4 million visitors a year, so it's definitely a tourist hotspot. When I was there, we walked around the castle. When you're up close, you realize how huge it really is. King Ludwig had some imagination. Anyways, I found a great vantage point in the trees with a perfect view of the castle. I, mean, I just can't get over the beauty of this place. I mean, it's truly something out of a Disney fairy tale. Now, another incredible spot nearby is St. Coleman's Church. It's located just a few minutes away and has a splendid view of the castle and the Bavarian Alps. One of my favorite memories of my time in Germany was enjoying the sunset at the church, just marveling at the green pastures and overall scenery. Germany truly is a magical place. Well, that is it for my Germany top 25. I'm just barely scratching the surface. I Damn, bro. I mean, there's so many more incredible places in this country. Let me know where your favorite place is in Germany in the comments below. I also started a Spanish channel. Yeah. Well, that was a that was a great video. <laughs> Lots of different places to visit. I was shocked at uh, the amount of castles there were throughout Germany and how they're all strategically perched at the top of hills. And what a beautiful country. So many different places to uh, to visit. So hopefully we'll get to visit Germany at some point in the future um let me know what your favorite place in germany is and hit the like button hit subscribe and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace